Hey, I'm Mike, and I like to make stuff. Wait a minute, that's not my channel. Let me try that again. What's up, guys? I'm Mike, and this is the Ultimate Tech Hub. That's better. But I do like to make stuff. And today, I'm gonna show you how to make this awesome media center for gaming, for streaming, for PS5, for Switch, for watching TV, or just plain relaxing. And we're gonna show you how we transformed an ugly media center that didn't function very well into a media center that functions great and looks amazing. And in this video, we're gonna show you how to make this desk, how to install it, how to install the wall-mounted TV. We'll show you how to install the electrical outlet behind the TV. We'll show you how to hide the wires behind the TV as well as hide the wires underneath the desk. And lastly, we're gonna show you how to install the RGB lighting behind the TV and under the desk as well. And one more thing. Full disclosure, I am not a professional carpenter, so keep that in mind while you're watching me make this desk. And of course, while you're watching the video, hit subscribe, it's completely free. So without further ado, let's get started. All right guys, you can see where my son is playing in the media room. That's where the remodel is gonna take place. A brand new floating shelf slash desk. I went ahead and had Home Depot pre-cut the two boards to 93 inches, and each board is 11 and a quarter inches wide. And we're gonna add one more piece to the front that is one and a half inches wide all the way around. This piece of wood will give the appearance that the desk is one and a half inches thick. And the final dimensions for this shelf will be 93 inches long by 24 inches wide. So first, we'll glue up the first two boards. And then we'll glue up the front piece. And you probably noticed I didn't use biscuits or pocket holes to help secure these tops together. About a year ago, I used the same technique to build a 14 foot floating desk and the seams held up perfectly. And here's a link to that video, so make sure to watch that video after you finish watching this one. Drying time for this glue was about 18 hours. For this front piece, my plan was to use walnut to give the top some contrast and walnut looks amazing. However, walnut is very expensive, so I had to use pine. All right, this is dry, we already added the the wood filler to the cracks here a little bit too, so. And just a heads up, when you buy wood filler, make sure the color of the wood filler matches your wood. And then next, it's off to sanding. And I mean a lot of sanding. You wanna start with 150 grit sandpaper, then go to 220, and then finish up with 320 for that super smooth finish. And I think I sanded the top for about three hours, but lucky for you, I'm just gonna fast forward it. All right, we're gonna drill three holes. One here, one here, one here. We're gonna use this. This is gonna be for wire management, so the wires can go from underneath up through. I'll put a nice little decorative piece there so it'll look nice. So at this point, I just measured the holes and made sure all three holes were lined up evenly. And the size of each hole is two inches. Perfect for wire management. And I probably should have drilled these holes before I sanded these boards. But no big deal. I went back later and sanded the holes to make them smooth. Okay, now at this point, we can stain and seal the top. However, we chose not to stain the boards. I love the look of pine. So all we have to do is seal the top. And we're gonna do seven coats. And you can see there's a two by four right here. It's also 93 inches long. This floating desk will sit on top of the two by four. So I sanded the two by four, the same as the top, and I'm gonna seal this two by four as well. That way all the wood will match. And we chose a fast drying polyurethane from Minwax, and we chose a clear satin. We use this polyurethane on our custom nine foot barn door build, as well as our custom 14 foot floating desk. And both projects turned out great. The drying time for this polyurethane is about 10 hours, and maybe seven hours in the summertime. And like I said before, we did seven coats. And we did light sanding between coats with 320 grit sandpaper. And here's a time lapse of all seven coats. It took about four days. And if you're gonna build a desk that's gonna be used quite a bit, definitely go with six or seven coats. This will keep the top durable, and whatever gets spilled on it will clean up easily. All right, now it's time to build the frame that this desk slash shelf will sit on top of. And this frame is made of two by fours. Essentially, we're gonna build a box frame that attaches to the walls in that nook. And this shelf will slide on top of it 
and attached with pocket hole screws. And lucky for me, I had extra 2x4s in my garage from previous projects. So the only 2x4 I had to buy was the 2x4 that I sealed with the top. All other 2x4s are recycled. Okay, we're gonna make five cuts. Yeah, five cuts. So we take, we cut these 19.5, another 19.5. This is for the four cross braces. This is the 29 inches, this is for the back brace. This is the extra piece of wood that I'm missing from the back. And that's all the cuts we're gonna make on this. Then we're ready to start doing pocket holes in all these. And then two of the middle ones, I'm gonna do two inch holes in both for cable management. So we can run cables through without having cables, you know, sagging down here anywhere. It'll be real tight, it'll look real good. You won't see any cables, so. So now it's time to make some pocket holes. These holes are for attaching the top of the desk to the frame. We're not gonna use any glue here at all. And of course at this point, you should know which side of the two x four will face the top. Every two x four will have pocket holes. Spaced out about five inches, maybe six inches. And with the cross beams, they will have pocket holes on the ends as well. And two of the cross beams will have two inch holes for wire management. And now I'm gonna show you what the box will look like. This will give you an idea of how this works. It's actually very simple. And there we go, we're done. Let's go ahead and build it. Then we'll attach the top of the desk. So first thing, we need to move all this stuff out of the way. And next, we need a power outlet installed at the middle of the wall for our big screen TV. So I called Mike from JDM Automations to install this outlet. And if you live in the Las Vegas area and you need an outlet installed or a TV mounted to the wall or any low voltage work, give Mike a call. We'll have all his information in the description below. The most common way to add an outlet, especially for big screen TVs, is to piggyback off an outlet below. And that's exactly what Mike is doing. I'm not sure what the actual term is because I'm not an electrician. But essentially, he's running power from the outlet below to the top. And this wire will power the new outlet. And of course, if you're not comfortable doing this yourself, hire a professional. You don't want to get zapped. And I chose to have Mike install this first before I installed any 2x4s. That way, he had an easy installation. So I'm gonna start with the first two x four installed on the back wall. The height of the two x four is 31 inches, measured from the top of the two x four to the tile. And this recycled two x four is 64 inches long, which doing my math means the next two x four I need will be 29 inches long. This will give me the 93 inches to cover the back side of the wall. And just a heads up, when installing these two x fours, they need to attach to studs if possible. You can use heavy duty wall anchors, but use those only if you have to. I'm using two two and a half inch deck screws at each stud location. This provides plenty of strength, and my studs are 16 inches on center. As you begin to secure the two x four, make sure it's level. And as you can see, the board is perfectly level. So at this point, I continue drilling holes into the studs and then attaching the two and a half inch deck screws. And guys, don't forget to follow us on Instagram. We have product giveaways every four months. And to be eligible for those giveaways, you must be following us. So now it's time to secure that 29 inch board. And there's two stud locations, perfect. And when you're working alone, it's always nice to have a box sitting around that you can use to hold up a board. All right, we got the side piece over here. One thing I didn't show you, I didn't uh, show on camera. I did a pocket hole screw on each side. That way, when I put this up here like this, I'm gonna do a longer screw that goes through here here into the studs, so those can be really secure. Also, I'm gonna put a screw here where there's no stud, but I have one of these 50 pound drywall anchors and I'll just put it in here and then I get the stud right here. 
we'll make it all level. But first I need to go ahead and drill. Phillips head screwdriver. I've used these drywall anchors on many projects and they work well. Go. But before I secure that, I do want to make sure this is level. One more time. So important to stay level. You don't want a desk that's off. Yeah, that's good. That's good. do is drill these real quick and then I'll do this one as well. So guys, securing the side piece with four screws is most likely overkill, but it's better to be safe than sorry. And this screw is a three and a half inch deck screw. And this side is exactly the same process. We secure the two by four with four screws. And guys, I want to encourage you to visit my Patreon page where $2 a month helps keep this channel going. And for every new member, I do a personal shout out on the very next video. All right guys, now we're done with the back and the side pieces. Now it's time to do a wire drop. I'm gonna cut a hole at the top where the outlet is and then do the same at the bottom. Then I'll wire drop four HDMI cables and maybe a fiber audio line as well. And this is our location for the wire drop. The first thing we're going to do is install a low voltage gang wall plate. Use a pencil to trace out the cutout area, then start cutting. You'll need a drywall saw. I intentionally trace the inside of the gang wall plate instead of the outside to prevent cutting too much drywall away at the beginning. When cutting drywall, less is best. If you cut out too much drywall, you're going to have a hole or even a gap. Once you've cut out enough drywall, insert the low voltage gang wall plate, then secure it by tightening the screws. Easy. We're gonna secure this wall plate after we drop the wires. It's easier that way. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing at the bottom. And once we're done, we can now run the wires from the top hole to the bottom hole. All right, the best way to run this cable from here to here, you could just drop it and hope that it would do it would somehow just go down there. It's the old bolt on the string, and the reason why it works so well is because gravity. Something heavy on the end of this will always go down straight. Always. Gravity always works. It's the best way to do this. Now, simple. How are you gonna get the HDMI through there? Easy. Tap like that. You can nod it, I don't have to nod it. It's not going very far. Simple, slowly, pull it. If it gets caught, go back up and down a little bit, okay? If you caught something, then there's, there's wood back there. You never know. See, it's getting caught a little bit. And there we go. Now, simply untie it. And now you've got yourself HDMI, run through. Next thing you want you could do, if all you're gonna do is run one HDMI, do it like this, attach this up here, same way at the bottom. Now for me, I'm gonna run three more HDMIs. Whether I use them or not, I'm gonna have them ran anyways. That way, I don't have to worry, it's already there. I'm not gonna go behind the TV and you know, hook them up and try to run a fish it. If you're here doing this, run as many as you can. The old bolt on a string, let gravity do all the work. Okay, now it's time to install the full motion TV wall mount. This wall mount is from Sam's Club. You can see the name Members Mark. I have a video link right here on how to install a full motion TV wall mount. So if you want a detailed video on how to do this, watch that video later. And I have to say this Members Mark TV wall mount was super easy to install because the wall bracket is all in one piece. With most full motion TV wall mounts, the wall bracket is not usually assembled. Once you've found the studs, you can tape the template to the wall and start drilling. All four bolts need to go into studs. There's two important things to consider when installing a full motion TV wall mount or any TV wall mount. And the first is the location, 
how high do you want that wall mount, and making sure there are studs to connect it. Once you're done installing the wall mount, you need to install the brackets to the back of the TV. And then hang the TV on the wall mount. And it's always good to have some help when you're hanging the TV. And then secure it. All right. A last minute detail I'm gonna add, I think is brilliant. I'm gonna drill a two inch hole right here, through here, going into the drywall. I'm gonna add this later as well. But this way I can pull wires through here. I'll be putting the Bose, uh, the fiber cable in there, a couple of HDMIs through here under the desk so you'll never see any of the wiring. Down here we'll keep this just in case I wanna put a computer right here, we can hook it up or whatever else. But I think it's brilliant, we're gonna do it right here. It's gonna get a little bit messy, but uh, it's a last minute thing, but I think it's really cool, so let's do it. Okay, now that we have our hidden wire drop location, I'll pull some wires through there in a little bit. I think I'll pull all four HDMI cables through and the audio fiber optic cable as well. Now it's time to attach the front facing two x four. This is the one that I sanded and sealed as well. We're gonna attach this first and then I'll attach the two inside cross beams. And then we're almost done. I'm gonna attach the front board to the side board with a pocket hole screw. And I'll do the same on the other side. All right, now onto the middle cross beams. These beams are spaced 31 inches apart, and they're secured with pocket hole screws, two on each end. And you can see I pulled the wires through the hole already. I'm really happy with the last minute change. It worked out great. And now we're gonna secure the last two by four with pocket hole screws. Then we'll install the top. And the two by four frame is all done. And I'm really glad that I drilled those holes for wire management. It's going to come in handy big time. So now is the moment we've been waiting for. Let's install the top. I was kind of worried at first that the top wouldn't fit, but it fits perfect. It's snug and goes all the way to the back to the wall. When I add the pocket hole screws, the desktop will flatten out perfectly. A little celebration. And now it's time to add the pocket hole screws. And to be honest, I only had about 30 pocket hole screws. So I had to pick and choose the areas that I wanted to secure. Mainly the corners and the front and the back. So guys, how much do you think it costs to build this media center? Remember, we used recycled 2x4s and the big screen TV came from the master bedroom. So all we had to pay for was some wood, the TV mount, some RGB lighting, and some hardware. And the total cost for this build is right below $300. Not bad. All right, for the last install, we're doing some RGBs because you gotta have RGBs. You gotta have it. So this one's gonna go behind the TV. We'll circle around the back of it to light up the back of this TV. It's controlled by an app on your phone. This one's gonna go underneath the shelf, desk, or whatever you wanna call it. And it'll, it'll light at the bottom of this. And both these controls with apps from your phone. Pretty cool, and uh, different colors, lots of colors. So we'll get this done, and then uh, we're all done after that. We'll start with the TV. simple. Instructions. I think we have some sort of adhesive tapes here. Got your user manual. Instructions here kind of how you kind of do this. But it should be very simple to do. So, but yeah. 
got the controller right here. I'll probably, yeah, it's got some 3M tape on the back. I'll stick it to the back of the, uh, the TV back here. Yeah, pretty cool. All right, let's get it done. Also, one thing to note, this is powered by USB, so make sure your TV has a USB port. Ours does, but some older TVs don't have it, but the new ones should have it, so. Anyways, this is powered by USB, so you don't need any electrical outlet in the back, even though I have one, so. All right, let's get started. So I found it kind of challenging to film this installation behind the TV. But essentially, these light strips have 3M tape on the back. It's a simple peel and stick. Just wrap the lights around the back of the TV and make sure the controller is near the USB port on your TV. And that's really it. One thing to note is that for my TV, when I turn off the TV, the lights turn off as well. I'm not sure if that goes for all TVs. So keep that in mind if you decide to buy these lights. And there you go. It's a very simple installation. After this, you want to download the Govi app and you can control these lights via Bluetooth. You can have solid colors, multiple colors, different scenes. It's a very cool app. And you can even set a schedule. Okay, now that we've installed the RGBs behind the TV, it looks really good. Now I'm gonna install the ones under the desk slash shelf. Should be easy. Now this is 16 feet, much longer. It's got a different controller and it's also is powered by a plug-in. You're gonna use a uh, DC plug-in, so this is not USB power, unfortunately. But it's all good, I have plenty of power underneath the cabinet here, underneath the shelf, so. All right, I'm gonna install it. And once again, like most of these, there's already that 3M adhesive on the back, so it's super easy to go ahead and uh, just stick to the, to the surface. But this is a lot of light, so I can wrap it probably twice. This is eight feet almost. I'll do like a wrap. All right, guys, first thing first, I'm just gonna go ahead and plug this power right here. I'm gonna go ahead and connect the controller. I think I wanna connect the controller somewhere like right here so I can come under here, under here and turn it on. Somewhere like this would be nice. This Govi RGB light set is very easy to install. Everything is secured with 3M tape, which is included. It's a simple plug and play. And the controller has three buttons you can use. You can turn the lights on and off, set color modes, or scenes. But the app is way better. It has way more control, including scheduling. So definitely download the app. And these lights are Bluetooth, not Wi-Fi. So at this point during the installation, you can see our wire management. I installed two surge protectors under the desk by hooking them on screws. Any large power brick you see, including the five port switch, is secured with Gorilla Brand double sided sticky tape. And all the wires under the desk are secured with cup hooks. Simply drill a hole, twist in a hook, and hang the wires on them. It does look chaotic, but there is a method to my madness. But the best part about this is you can't see any wires. The only four wires that are visible are the two network wires and the two power outlet wires. But that's it. It's a super clean look and I love it. And I truly hope this video inspires you to build something awesome like this. It's not that difficult. It just takes some pre-planning and some simple organization. So guys, if you have any questions about this build, leave the questions in the comments below. We answer all of our comments. And also, you need to follow us on Instagram. We do giveaways every four months. And to be involved in the drawing, you have to be following us. And guys, I also want to encourage you to visit my Patreon page, where $2 a month helps keep this channel going. And as usual, if you like this video, give a thumbs up and share it. If you love it, hit subscribe to keep this channel alive. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next video real soon. Peace.